Mina, Ohio Gazimash, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back from my moving trip. Well, it wasn't exactly a trip, I didn't go out of state or anything. But back from all the moving stuff. Finally back on track, back on schedule. Even though I'm technically releasing Tuesday stuff Wednesday morning. But that's normal for me, so let's jump right into it. It's First Chronicles. It's kind of sad how true that is. Anyway, nothing wrong with being a night person. It's not sad. It's who I am. And there's not, and since the Bible doesn't condemn that particular activity, nothing wrong with it. First Chronicles chapter 13. Let's start at verse 1. This is actually going to track through two more chapters of Scripture to bring it to the ultimate point. Will I try to get through it quickly? I will. Will I fail miserably? Probably. First Chronicles 13 verse 1. Then David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said to all the assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is of the Lord our God, let us send out to our brethren everywhere who are left in all the land of Israel, and with them to the priests and Levites who are in their cities and their common lands, that they may gather I'm sorry, that they may gather together to us, and let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we have not inquired at it since the days of Saul. So David has a heart for God, he wants God's things, he wants God's presence is good. Verse 4, Then all the assembly said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David gathered all Israel together, from Shehor in Egypt to as far as the entrance of Hamath, to bring the Ark of God from kirjath Jerim. So we've got a huge search going on for the Ark of the Covenant. And in those days, they found it. And David and all Israel went up to Bala, to kirjath Jerim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God the Lord, who dwells between the cherubim, where his name is proclaimed. So they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab, and Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. Then David and all Israel played music before God with all their might, with singing on harps, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on cymbals, and with trumpets. And when they came to Chidon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and he struck him because he put his hand to the ark, and he died there before God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. Therefore that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of God that day, saying, How can I bring the ark of God to me? So David would not move the ark with him into the city of David, but took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. Believe it or not, we just went through an entire chapter of Scripture together in under three minutes with me rambling. Not all chapters are that short, granted, but if you're intimidated by, intimidated by reading an entire chapter of Scripture, don't be. It's not incredibly difficult. It can usually be done under 10 minutes. So let that be an example to you right there. I didn't even mean to throw that point in there. That one was for free. So we've got the Ark of the Covenant stuck in this house of an Obed-Edom, and the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed all that he had. So it's great. The Lord doesn't hate Israel, doesn't hate David. Honestly, he probably didn't hate Uzzah either. But Uzzah touched that which was sacred. So let's skip forward past 14 into chapter 15. Let's go to start at verse 1. David built houses for himself in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. So in a lot of the people in the charismatic movement I've heard, they've talked about you know, the Ark of the Covenant was in a tent made by David, or the Tabernacle of David, so to speak. And actually, the book of Acts mentions such a thing. Here's where it comes from. It's not mentioned anywhere in the Kings. It is right here in this verse in Chronicles. It was the Ark of the Covenant. It wasn't in the Holy of Holies. It was in a friggin' tent. First, I, that amazes me, because it's the, it was the very presence of God himself. He's just chilling in a tent surrounded by worshipers, not sequestered off somewhere in the Holy of Holies behind veils and smoke. He's right there in the midst of Israel. Oh, just being in God's presence is like, it's an exciting thought for me. And I mean, and I, in the New Testament, I have the privilege of doing that anytime, anywhere, every day. It's just so cool to read about that. Like, there it was! And the people, could, for a time, until Solomon built a temple, could gather around it. That's so cool. And that's not the ultimate point either. Verse 2. Lots of freebies today. Then David said, No one may carry the ark of God but the Levites, for the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister before him forever. Jump down to verse 13. Or actually, back up to verse 12. First Chronicles 15, verse 12. He, David, said to them, 
You are the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites. Sanctify yourselves, you and your brethren, that you may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel to the place I have prepared for it. <clears throat> for because you did not do it the first time, the Lord our God broke out against us, because we did not consult him about the proper order. There is a way you approach God. There is a reverence and definitely a very real fear when you come to your maker. It's very real, and it should be very poignant. That was the ultimate point of this message. Was Uzzah some great sinner? Was God like, obviously God was angry at him, but was he more angry at him than the rest of Israel? I seriously doubt that, but Uzzah did one thing that was particularly bad. He reached out and he touched the Ark of the Covenant. Now, to me, was God wrong to do that? Absolutely not. He left clear instructions. Here's how you handle the Ark of the Covenant. Here's how you handle my presence. Clear instructions. They didn't follow it. Honestly, it amazes me that God didn't strike everyone dead for, one, putting him in that tent, apparently, that he eventually... He dwelt in the Ark of the Covenant for a while. Uh, he, he didn't leave the Ark. He didn't leave the presence of the people. And apparently no one else was struck down dead. He was content to dwell in that tent, openly, with everyone around worshiping. He was content to do that, even though the tabernacle was also detailed. How, you know, where the Ark of the Covenant is supposed to be, that was detailed. What the tabernacle was supposed to look like, that was detailed. And David didn't follow those instructions exactly, but no one was struck dead for that. Um, the, car, the Ark of the Covenant was placed in a cart and carried on a cart. No one died at that point. No one was actually killed until someone laid their hands on the Ark itself. Now, just my opinion, this isn't Bible. That was incredibly merciful of God to deal with all that stuff that was completely outside of the regulations and laws which were laid down in the book of Moses. Um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the Pentateuch, the books of the law. No one was struck dead until someone actually touched the Ark of the Covenant. I think uh, contrary to God being in the wrong, he was incredibly merciful for allowing all of that stuff. And I think it's really cool that he dwelt in a tent and everyone just gathered around and worshipped him. I just, that just warms my arm. I'm like, yeah, God likes being with us. It's so cool because we're sinners and we don't deserve him after we turned our backs on him. But he loves us anyway. Old Testament too. So many freebies in this one today. I'm coming back with a bang after all those days of absence. So there is a time and a place and a way to be in God's presence. God obviously will take much less than he's called for. Being in a tent, not the tabernacle. Being surrounded by everyone when the presence, his presence in the ark was supposed to be sequestered off in the Holy of Holies and the high priest was only supposed to come in once a year with a, thick, with a sensor burning with thick smoke. God will take us in so many states that are less than his ideal state. But there is a point where God says, son, daughter, you're not coming any closer. Right now you can't. You are sinful, you're filthy, and you can't touch me. And of course, nowadays, praise God for coming in the flesh in the form of Jesus Christ and dying for us so we can all come to the throne of grace boldly to seek help in time of need. Despite the blood of Jesus being there, that doesn't mean we can be whimsical or presumptuous with the Lord. Does that make sense? <clears throat> yes, we can touch him now. Because the blood of Jesus covers our sins. That doesn't mean we can walk up and slap him. Doesn't mean we can, you know, just do whatever we want. Blatant sin in his presence. Just because we can touch him now, doesn't mean we can do just anything we want. You know, you love your parents. You love them. You respect them. You honor them. You probably don't walk up and punch your mom in the face. There is still a way and a time, and a reverence, and a very real fear that comes with approaching the presence of the living God, your creator, your maker, and your sustainer, whose life he literally holds in the palm of his hand. So that is it for the entire message. Lots and lots of freebies today. Glad to be back on YouTube. Time to get my butt back in gear and do a little bit more work. Well, I've been working, just it's been more of the manual labor kind. And that day off, uh, I've still been doing work of various kinds. So it's not like I've gotten some huge break or anything. But um, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Looking forward to being back on YouTube, putting out more videos for you guys. I love you, and God bless.